Hey guys, it's YB. Welcome back to editing school. I've done so many editing behind the scenes of my most complicated timelines and edits, but today we're gonna go back to the basics. Today I'm going to teach you how to get started with editing with Adobe's Premiere Beta, from simple organization tips to technical skills like masking so that you can even do it yourself. And thank you Adobe for sponsoring this video. You guys know I use Premiere all the time when I edit, so it feels like such a good match to finally work with them. So this is my most recent project, which is about my moving. This was filmed over the course of two months and more because I was starting from the beginning of the renovation to the final house tour So it has a lot of footage a lot of editing that has to go into it So this feels like the perfect video to show you guys as an example But first before we even open premiere I'm gonna show you guys how I organize the project because organization is key So here is my folder organizations on my drive So we have the project files then in my video folder This is where all my footage go to there's the after effects exports if I ever use it there's the footage folder, which I have all the footage that I filmed here. So even here, you can see it's organized very detailed. So I have week one to week eight, which was all the renovation footage. We then have an audio folder right here where I separate them by dialogue, which is like usually the lav mics we have on us. So that if we have recording audio of each person, we put it here. We have the music, then we have the sound effects. And we have the graphics folder where I can download any stock footage or graphics. And thumbnails which i make later for the youtube so we have the beta app right here we're going to open that up so i've already imported all my footage so you can see here on the side all the folder structure is already there and within the footage folder we have all the stuff imported so the first thing i do after i've imported all the footage is to organize them by colors this is where the folder organization we did earlier becomes helpful so all you have to do is really go to week one select all of them and go to label and then select the color that you like. So I'm gonna go with violet. Okay, now you can see on the timeline here that all the colors of week one have turned violet. So now you can see this is just week one footage. So let me just make a little bit of a space in between. Let's do the same for every week. So let's go to week two. Let's make this next color Caribbean. I love the little names that they have here. Okay, so now we've colored all of them here. Once we go to the select timeline, you can see them all divided perfectly by colors. This is going to help me so much later on when I have to go back on the timeline and all the edit is done and I have to see which day was which. Now I'm going to start pulling selects. This means I'm gonna go through the entire footage and pull out the moments that are useful. Now the usual projects that I worked on are 12 to 15 hours of footage, which is a lot of video to watch in one setting. This is why there's double speed. You can watch in double speed speed or triple speed and how I make it double speed is by pressing the button L on the keyboard now keyboard shortcuts is another very important thing when you're learning editing so if you go up here where it says Premiere Pro you'll see keyboard shortcuts so I have it on the Adobe Premiere Pro default because that's just what I'm used to but you can put it in any different setting that you're used to so once you start using these keyboard shortcuts your life will be so much easier because your edit will be so much faster like my hand is on the keyboard the whole time when I edit because I just have to press buttons as I go instead of looking up things every time. So applying that, I'm using L to watch everything in double speed. So once I found the part that I want to cut, I press C, which is my keyboard shortcut for cutting, put it right here. Okay, I restarted a sentence right here, so I'm going to go back here and cut and press V, my keyboard shortcut, to turn the mouse into this again, pull it up, pull it down. This is how I pull selects. Here, I'm going to just copy and paste everything that I selected right here. So now you already kind of have a general rough cut of everything that you wanted. And all you have to do is make it stylized. That way it becomes a full edit. So if you guys have watched my edits, you know I love zigzag cutting, which is also called J cuts and L cuts, which means I'm gonna cut right here. And for the next cut, I'm gonna, instead of just putting it like this, I put it down here and I have a little bit of an overlap. You see how this is overlapping right here? And this alone makes the audio so much smoother than if you were just to put next to each other. And we're gonna do this throughout the whole cut, which means for the next cutting section, I'm gonna do that like this. Later, it would look something like this. So this is another video that I was editing, but the general idea is that everything is zigzag, even the music is zigzag, so that even if there's an overlap, it is smooth. Okay, so now that we went over the basics, let me show you a little more technical stuff that looks hard, but even you will be able to do with the new Premiere Pro. First, let me show you an easy example. So here is when I tried to show the bedroom transformation. This is how the bedroom looked like before, and I wanted to get rid of these windows and turn it into like a full length sliding door situation. So in order to demonstrate that, I ended up making it look like this, which is how it exactly turned out. And how did I do this? Was by masking myself from this shot to just continuously this shot 
shot. And before I had to do it all manually, but now with the Premiere Pro's new masking tool, this is done in seconds. Let me show you guys what I had to do before. In order to track myself as I was moving, I first had to go to the beginning of the shot and literally draw over myself like this. And this would take alone so long, depending on how detailed I wanted to be, which was very detailed. So you can see, and what was I gonna do when I got to these fingers, you know? This is just gonna take forever. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna stop right here because that is just way too much work. Now, guess what you can do? All you have to do is go right here. Here it says object mask tool. You're gonna click on it. And now you're gonna see this right here. So before you even do anything, if you hover over myself, look at this. I am automatically selected. Like, it, it's that easy. It has already detected me as an object and I am selected. So you can literally just mask myself like this within seconds. And you know, if I wanted to add like an outlet plug right here or here, like some more obvious things that are out here, I could just click on that. So now let's say I wanted to select this entire window instead, then I could go right here. Here's a lasso and rectangle tool. Rectangle means that you can just draw this a rectangle right here and it will select everything that is in there so it has already selected all the windows but if you want to be more precise see here go lasso and then you will be able to just kind of draw the amount of things that you wanted to select then ta-da it is selected again it is that easy now this color right here just shows you the overlay whatever you want it you can make it black and white just like this you can make it i just like red and simple but yeah it has become so easy to mask anything that i am just amazed at how much time this will save i'm just gonna right click rename myself to yb that, that is me now an object mask has been created right here and i'm going to track myself just by pressing this this will track myself as I go. Before, if you want my precise drawing of each dot, it would not track perfectly as I move. But now with the help of AI, it is tracking myself perfectly. I don't have to fix anything. And now that I am tracked, all I have to do is to crop myself out just like this by applying crop. But since I wanna actually show myself, I'm going to invert this and here I am. There's a movement of me just by myself. And now I'm just gonna add the background. I have this shot once the door was made here. So I'm just gonna put that under me. And now you can go from the before to after and it fits my description perfectly. So again, you can compare how I used to do it before, how it used to take me so long and now it's just a click of a button. It is so amazing. Okay, now we're gonna try something a little harder. So I was gonna show the before and after of my living room. Amazing, right? The change. But I wanted to make it so that things appear one by one just like this. So that it shows how it's fully decorated. This was done very similar way but with a lot of layers so let me teach you quickly. As always I started out with a beginning shot like this and the first thing I wanted to do was show the floor change. I'm gonna duplicate this and then I just selected the floor by going to object mask again and this floor is not clickable because it's so big so what are we gonna do? Use a lasso and just kind of draw over the whole thing. Just like that. And ta-da, the floor is already selected, amazing. I'm just going to track it so that the floor is tracked. And now that that is isolated, I'm going to change the color of the floors. Add color, limitry color. Then do a little bit of editing. The floor saturation was a little less and it was a little brighter. And as you can see, the only color I'm changing is the floor. And now you can see the difference of the floor just changing as the camera moves. Now for the next layer, I'm bringing in the final shot, but we don't want to show everything at once yet. So let's select everything separately. So I want this window to come first. So what I'm going to do is go to object and draw over the windows. Perfect, it's already been selected. If you wanna take anything out, you can click the minus button and subtract it also, but this is perfect for me. I'm gonna rename this window. Now I'm gonna do couch and this is already selectable, but you can see that everything has been added. So all you have to do is just click on it individually or you can draw like a lasso tool again and it is all selected. So here I'm just gonna rename couch. And after that, we want the coffee table to show next. It's already selectable, so I'm gonna click both. Rename coffee table. What's next? We want the carpet and Louis to come out next. We're gonna click on Louis because he's already selectable. Then the carpet is not complete, so again, we're gonna draw over it like that. Just do it. Not that great, and it's already selected. It's amazing. So I'm just gonna select that, rename to perfect. 
And lastly, I want Tyrion and these cat beds to come up. So I am going to select Tyrion. She should be selectable. And her little legs. <laughs> and then the bed all together. And then rename this Tyrion. Now, before we do anything, we have to track all of them individually. So we're going to go right here where all the masks have been created. You can see window, couch, coffee table, carpet. Tyrion. They have been all selected individually and then you want to track them. So since I started this in the middle of the shot, we can actually click here. So it will actually track forward and backward. If you click this, so it's tracking the window backwards and forward. See now it is tracking backwards and now we have to do it for all of them. After that, I duplicated all the sequences, added crop to each of them and now it looks like this. It was that easy. Again, this would have taken me so long to do it individually. I probably wouldn't have even attempted this because it would have taken me too long. And now with the AI tool in Premiere, it is so easier to select everything and mask it. And masking isn't only for cropping. You can add blurs to specific things and track it. You can change the color of a certain thing and keep it that way. There are so many different things that you can do with this. So that's all for today. We went over how to start a project, how to organize and color code everything, and even how to do some magic in editing. So as you just saw, Premiere is so easy to learn editing, you don't have to be a pro to get started. Try Adobe Premiere Beta with the new AI-powered masking tools available on both desktop and iPhone. You can check out the link in my description box to download and let me know if you guys have any other editing questions, I can answer them. Thank you guys for watching, we'll see you next time. Bye!